You know, it was interesting, was, uh, when I lived in Alaska, I had to work for a bunch of different people at different times, and, oh, I'd be hired on as a, I guess you'd say a manager. <laughs> in Alaska, it's kind of funny because they put you in charge, you know, and they don't necessarily always give you the titles, but they'll put you in charge of a lodge or run a business and take care of a business place for them, you know, especially if it's a tourist industry or something. And I remember I was running a lodge and, and uh, I was actually hired on as a caretaker and I was supposed to take care of the lodge while it was shut down for the winter. Well, gradually the people that were there, the boss's son, kind of got into drugs and he disappeared. Then people that were supposed to be above me in charge, they gradually disappeared and beginning to wonder, you know, what was going on. And so I got put in charge and I started making them money. <laughs> in the dead of winter, I was making them money. I even filled the... Uh, the lodge up 50 rooms in dead of winter. Well, because of that, they put me in charge and I uh, worked for them and made them some money. And then I had this supervisor come in that was a, uh, a woman bookkeeper. And uh, she came in and she represented the owner. And I'd already met the owner and shook hands with him and talked to him. And we had a working relationship. And, this woman came in and she started telling me all kinds of things. And, you know, I kept thinking, Lord, I don't know. So she pulled a lot of stunts and did her thing. And I kept not saying much and kind of turning it over to God and letting him do what he does best. And gradually, you know, it came time to some point in time where I felt like God was saying, get out. So, a gentleman came up to me and he said, uh, you know, I've been noticing, you know, you've been running this business. And I said, yep. He said, well, you know who you work for? And I said, yep. <laughs> Here you're having problems. I said, yep. <laughs> so they offered me a job. So I uh, told this woman supervisor that you know, I've been offered a job and I don't think I want to work for you. So they, she tried to pull some stunt with my payroll and she managed to hold back parts of it. And people told me, well, you know, you ought to sue her. You know, you ought to take her to court. You know, and you ought to go after her. You know, and I said, well, yeah, probably could. And I prayed about it and God said, no. He says, don't worry about it. You know, it's more like, I'll take care of it. And so the Lord, you know, showed me and gave me some scriptures about it. And I was comfortable, you know, so I left. And sure enough, you know, down the road, you know, I got part of my money back from the owner. Then, oh, I guess it was about a year later. I was still in the bush and I heard that she got fired. Turned out she was embezzling. And I thought, praise the Lord. <laughs> and the amazing thing was, was that, you know, the person that I worked for, the owner, was pretty much a crook. You know, I mean, he had done some pretty shady things, you know. And I kind of knew that. You know, still worked for the man and kind of kept away from him, you know. And did my thing and made him money. Well, as it turned out, you know, down the road... I was, uh, oh, I don't know, I guess about five years later, left Alaska. I was down in the, what we call Lower 48. I think I was in uh, Reno, might have been. And of all things, I was flipping the newspaper, which I don't read newspapers. I just happened to find one, and I opened it up, and tiny, tiny article way in the back talked about up in... Bristol Bay, the uh, Quinault Landing Hotel. 
and Lodge burned to the ground. <laughs> and I started laughing. <laughs> and I thought of all the grief that I had been given, because I haven't mentioned it all, with all the things that I had gone through with that place. And I kind of thought about it for a while, and it said nobody died. It said the fire started in the basement in a far corner, which I knew what, where and what. And I knew that there was no way a fire could start there. And I knew the man, you know, he has his insurance, you know. But to have it completely burned out, you know, I thought, boy, Lord, you have a way of bringing back the harvest, so to speak, of what people reap and sow. Sometimes when you sow to your flesh, you'll reap of your flesh destruction. Sometimes when you sow to the Spirit, of the Spirit you'll reap reward. But there's an expression that people like to say that, you know, what comes around goes around, you know, and that you reap what you sow and that you, you, they call it good and bad karma, which it's not true. But God does bring, you know, like they, one famous line says, chickens come home to roost or whatever, but God does protect his children. He protects you and I. And if you get in the habit of expecting to see how God will reward those who persecute you, who despitefully use you, who do all manner of things that may be against you unjustly, and you don't defend yourself, but you turn it over to the Lord, he may show you because maybe he wants you to teach someone someday about how he has a lot better way of dealing with things in your life than you do if you try to assert your rights, your privileges, your ability, if you want to assert yourself, to sue people or to take them to court or to stand up for your own self. You know, me? <laughs> I'm kind of funny. I'd rather give a glass of cold water to my enemy, you know, and heap fiery coals on their head than I would to even save them sometimes, you know. And the old joke used to be, you don't want to get a cup of cold water from Michael. <laughs> you don't know what he's thinking. <laughs> well, the only thing I can say is, you come to my house, if I offer you Pepsi, you're on the good side. But with a glass of cold water, I hope you know what Proverbs says, because the Lord has a way of taking care of his children. And whatsoever they do unto you, they've done unto Jesus. So, in this life, you will see the recompense, sometimes, of workers that maybe they come after you. Don't worry about it. Maybe they're critical of you. Don't worry about it. Maybe they've taken you to court. Don't worry about it. God will take care of it. By my spirit, man is apt to think that once in time only was my miracle working power in action. That is not so. Wherever man trusts wholly in me and leaves to me the choosing of the very day and the hour, then there is my miracle working power as manifest, as marvelously manifest today. Even as it was when I was on earth, as it ever was set to my apostles free to work miracles of, of wonder and healing through them, so too it shall be with you. When it is my timing, when it is my will, and when it is my way, I will do it. Trust in me. Have a boundless faith in me, and you will see, and in seeing will give me all the glory. Remember and say often to yourselves, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. A lot of people that take and abuse their spiritual gifts, Forget the part that says not by might, nor by power, because they take a power seemingly of God and they exercise it in ways that maybe God didn't tell them to. So the reality of this scripture that it's not by might and not by power, but by my spirit is to let 
God lead so he does it and he gets the glory. Because nine times out of ten when you see someone out there on television or in some big crowd doing the things that seem to be of God and with God, they've already got their reward. They're getting nothing in heaven for it. But when you don't hear about is those miracles that you and I see on a one-to-one -one basis when you just know because you've experienced it yourself and seen it that you had no faith. You had no ability. You had no gifting. And yet you prayed for somebody and they got healed. That's not by might. And that's not by power. And that's not by faith. And that's not by some great gift. But it is by His Spirit. And it can happen with you any day of the week, any time that God wants to do it. Dwell much in thought upon all I accomplished on earth, and then say to yourselves, He, our Lord, our friend, could accomplish this now in our lives, through us and with us, for it is by His Spirit and not our own. Apply these miracles to your present day need, and know that your help and salvation are sure. The only thing I can say is that, in all of my ways, if that example from Alaska were the only example, then I would say, eh, you know, must have been a coincidence. Never mind the fact that you don't read newspapers. Never mind the fact that it was a tiny blip of a story. Never mind the fact that it's in a very, very remote part of Alaska. Never mind the fact that you know where the fire started and how it could not have been anything but set. And never mind the fact that your life circumstances fit it. And never mind the fact that the Lord may have spoken to you and said, it is accomplished. So, sometimes I think people get carried away maybe on how God does things and they make kind of weirdo stories that aren't true about gold dust and barking like dogs and stuff because they don't really see the normal miraculous things that God is doing by his spirit as we just simply don't brag about it and don't talk too much about it but we give him the credit for it so if that were the only example of my life you know Man, I'd love to say that, you know, maybe I made it up, but <laughs> unfortunately, that's just one example of many, many times where, hey, my defense is of the Lord. I don't need to lift a hand. I don't need to lift a finger. But you know what? I have lifted my voice to the Lord on high, and he has heard my cry and always delivered me. And I have seen the recompense so much so that it scares me when people abuse what God has decided to use, which is someone like me. And they come at me and they, they don't realize, hey, if I'm doing God's will, God's going to protect me. God's going to maybe like shuffle you off and you're going to kind of like suffer some consequences for maybe touching his anointed or choosing to attack someone that God is using. I'm nobody special, but man, I pray for people sometimes that God forgive them because man, they don't know what they're doing. They ain't messing with me. They're messing with you and me. <laughs> and God help them when you decide to do something. It scares me sometimes about just how real my God is. And sometimes it just cracks me up. And sometimes I am so glad for mercy and grace. Don't worry what people do to you. Worry what God does to them. And forgive them.